prominent Houston reverend ordered to pay $2.45 million to a woman that a jury found he gave herpes to. As it was a three day trial with six and a half hours of deliberations. And after that, a jury found Reverend Ralph D. West II liable and ordered that hefty judgment. Right, I can't fix it. She's got it for the rest of her life. Attorney Sean Murphy is speaking for his client, who a jury found contracted genital herpes from Reverend Ralph D. West II after meeting off Facebook. Oh, what a topic do we have before us? Living single in a pandemic, being surrounded in a world of selfies, seduction, sensationalism, and trying to stay committed, connected to Christ without compromise. The muscle that is being flexed more than any other is our thumb. I never knew my thumb could move so fast and so much. World Wide Web. Let me pause that sermon right there because we're going to get more into detail of that a little bit later. But that's real interesting, Mr. Ralph D. West, being that social media and the World Wide Web is what got you into this mess with this woman anyways. But let me let her lawyers explain how you had to pay $2.45 million meeting this woman on Facebook, the Internet. The things that we look at for cases like these are essentially four things. Is the defendant infected and how can we prove it? Did he know he was infected? And, you know, how do we prove and do we have evidence of that? Not only does Murphy say they were able to prove those facts, but also that Wes lied when asked about having herpes and that he gave it to his client after they had unprotected sex in March of 2018. She got an outbreak two or three days later, um, went in and got tested. And, you know, from there, able, you know, through the medical records, able to identify that he was the source of it, in part because she hadn't been with anybody else. She had had a prior negative test. Murphy says subsequent conversations supported the claims. When she asks, you know, where did this come from? His response was his son's mother. Bruh. He adds there were also emails between West and his client. Where she accuses him of knowing he had it, of giving it to her, um, you know, and there's other allegations about not caring about me, that kind of thing. The response, Murphy says, was telling. He never once denied that he had it or that he knew he had it. Okay, so let's jump into some of the excerpts from this lawsuit. So it says that they basically had an agreement that they would be truthful to each other, they would uphold certain values with one another, and he basically told her that he would, you know, have all of these morals and principles because he is a man of God. Now, let me read it to you and let's go into it. It says, during this time, parties had extensive communications and conversations regarding morals, values, principles, Christian beliefs, relationships, and hanky-panky. The plaintiff made clear to the defendant that she believed in and expected honesty, truthfulness, and transparency relationships. The plaintiff also made clear to the defendant that because of these foundational principles, she did not date much and was also overly protective of her health and well-being. During these communications and conversations, the defendant repeatedly represented that he was a man of God, that he shared the same fundamental belief in honesty, truth, and transparency that he had been tested in the past and that he was free and clean of any hanky panky related diseases so she was trying to have this conversation with him that many people should be having when you're about to engage in hanky panky however instead of just believing the the fact that he says yeah i'm free and clear i got tested you know, how about you see updated current results for yourself or a better chance is to go get tested together. Being that a lot of us have different health insurances, I say um, make sure that you see the proof and that it's legit and that it ain't photoshopped. But the ultimate best alternative would be to get tested together. Now, let's read some more of these excerpts. 
Okay, so these excerpts is her basically proving that she did not have this prior to him. And it says in these clippings, it says after accepting proof that plaintiff had tested negative for this in the past and had not had any hanky panky with any other individual for the last two years prior to meeting the defendant, the defendant admitted to the plaintiff that he knew that he had this and he had it before meeting her and that he had been infected by his baby mama. So after she finds out that he has this, they further have communication where he says, basically, she needs to remain silent, okay? He tried to basically intimidate her into not saying anything and then tried to use this whole Christianity thing as a way to shush her up. Sounds similar to, you know, the black families who sweep the... Anyways, we, we that's another topic. So it says... um, the defendant attempted to intimidate the plaintiff to remain silent, both in thought and with physical intimidation. The defendant made suggestions to the plaintiff that Christians don't take Christians to court and Christians turn the other cheek and forgive. Marry me as no other man will want to be with you and your family and father would be devastated by the news. Now, Christians turning the other cheek and forgive is the reason why I don't take these pastors serious. I don't go up into none of these church houses. I'd rather do what I need to do for myself at home because I can read the same book that they're reading at home. Um, They be sinning way more than the law allow, and you keep seeing all of these different headlines of this pastor and that pastor and this pastor i'll talk about some couple other pastors at the end but let's finish talking about this okay so as you see that there was a lot of people when i posted this who kind of felt like wow that's a lot of money and there was some pretty controversial comments under my post about this so i'm gonna go to my post where i posted this on instagram and i'm gonna read through some of what people had to say. So let's go to it right now. Okay, so the first comment that had people in a tizzy was this woman right here saying that she felt like if the person consented to having unprotected hanky-panky, then why is he held liable? And people had to basically school her on the fact of if you know you have it, you have to disclose it. You know, so this person says, unpopular opinion. I think two consenting adults engage in consensual hanky panky and neither use protection. How is only one person liable? So in the comments, they, like I said, schooled her and they said, by law, you have to disclose if you have a transmitted mm -mm to all partners. So, no, you don't get to be evil and just give people diseases like, come on. Another person says, if the man didn't want to wrap it up, she could have said no and been on her way, but she went for it anyways. Another person replied and says, he still was supposed to disclose that to her. That's not right, especially since he knew he had it. That is not right. Um, another person says, because he knowingly had it and didn't disclose that information. And then another person says, what? Like, how would you feel if someone knew that they, they had HIV or herpes and didn't tell you before this quote unquote consensual hanky panky? Hmm? OK, so let's go to some more comments. Um, another person said uh, this man said, marry me because no other man will want you sickening. OK, and that was on one of the court documents. And another person said, so I get you should disclose if you have something, not disputing that fact at all. But hear me out now. Why would you raw dog a pastor who ain't supposed to be having premarital hanky panky anyway? He in the pulpit preaching every Sunday about sin, yet you trust him enough to let him raw dog you and think he ain't on some BS. It's her fault just like it's his. Sorry, not sorry. Okay, another person says, I mean, two million 
for a cold sore is crazy ridiculous. She's not going to die, nor is it life-changing. What? 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 what, what? For what, what the people are crazy. Like this is literally insane that she typed this. She said people walk around with acne every day that affects them more than this, but get your money, I guess. Like what? How do you know this isn't life changing for her? Like how can you declare that her getting a disease that she can't get rid of that she now has to tell every single partner that she get with that she has that and that can interfere with whether somebody wants to proceed in dating her or not that's going to interfere in her relationships and so much more like how can you say that it's not going to affect her and it's something that he knew he had like what that's crazy okay and the comments went on and on and on okay somebody said why is she sleeping with the pastor question mark and so much more so y'all definitely go to my Instagram to read through some of the comments because y'all know folks be saying some craziness. Now, let's get back to his sermon that I told you guys that we'll revisit because I felt like there was some interesting things that he said in this sermon. OK, and I just want to know, actually, let's just roll it and we'll talk a little bit in a sec. But we're in another world, social media age. I mean, it's a place for us to escape, a place for us to meet new people, a place for us to be close and far all at the same time. And even though it's a place of escape, even there, we are faced with the fork in the road. Do I still even have to be a Christian or relegate to the believing principles that I know and hear? I mean, it's only social media. But the question is proposed to us, how do we remain faithful as believers, even though we are soaked and saturated in the social media age of selfies, seduction, and sensationalism? We're surrounded by fans-only pages over here. Because of the economic crisis, you start to see the pop-up of all these money schemes. You give me $100, I can flip it into $1,500. All you have to do is send this. Then you have these different models, male and women, who are 92% naked and the other 8% lightly clothed. Then you have the world of the secret disappearing messages on Snapchat. Huh? Surrounding us on every end, having some interesting conversations, meeting different people. And free because, hey, the message, the message disappears. <sighs> our devices have become the place of our work and our play. Child, this pastor is off the chain, honey. Not him on his sermon talking about Snapchat disappearing messages and how social media has become our play. And in the story, they said that that's where she met him. She met him on social media. And here he is doing a whole sermon about it. And it's like, I bet you do know about them Snapchat disappearing messages because you was probably over there sending the most craziest stuff on Snapchat knowing that it was going to disappear. Just a hot mess express, baby. And the fact that he got a whole sermon about this, <laughs> oh yeah, he was a menace. And there is other women of that church that may got the herpes. Now may, may allegedly got, but I'm sure with all of this sermon about social media and this and that, I'm, I, I highly doubt that was the only one he stuck his schloink schloink into. You know what I'm saying? But let's listen to a little bit more of what he had to say because he got to pay 2.45 and he was a whole menace. How many women do you think? How many women do you think <laughs> he was sending these disappearing Snapchat messages to, allegedly? I mean, <laughs> let's listen to a little bit more. And if you're like me at the end of the week, it's humiliating and humbling to see how high your screen time is but we're in a this is 2020 it's the time where we have to make some compromises 
my job, my family, and it seems like I have to make some compromises also with my faith. I'm at home, I'm single, and I'm saturated with images that are pulling at the root of my being every time I scroll and I'm single. Uh, some of you are saying, you know, you know, I ain't single. You know, I got a man, I got a woman. Newsflash, you're still single. Uh, by definition, someone who is not wed is single. So this is for the person who's single. You're not looking for anybody. You good with you. Or you're single. You dating, going on different dinner dates, hanging out with different people, not tied down to one, talking to you too. And you, you, you have a boyfriend, a girlfriend. You still single too. And oh yeah, uh, I hope this is, doesn't offend anyone. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm no judgment zone all day long right here. But truth is like a heat seeking missile. Uh, it'll find us wherever you are. Uh, those of you, just because you are living together, you are still single too. You're not married. So this is, <laughs> this is for you too, you know. But guess what? My grandmother used to always tell me, there's two sides to every pancake. Uh, that was her way of saying, you know, there's always another story. All right, so that's enough of Mr. Ralph D. West. In my opinion, I feel like that sermon very much gave, listen, we all sinning, okay? So y'all can't judge me when the news come out that I was laying it low and spreading it wide, okay? He was trying to give his members a forewarning that, you know, you can't judge me because you single, I was single, you sitting up there playing house with a man that you ain't married to, living together and all of that, y'all not with, y'all shacking up, and y'all can't really judge me on my situation. Okay, that's kind of what it gave to me. Now, let's go to another pastor who also gave one of his members a package that they could not get rid of. And now, unlike this guy, this person was called out for sleeping with several members, okay, and he had AIDS. So this says, Pastor with AIDS says he slept with his church members, and this was back in 2014. So let's hear a little bit of this clipping in trail. Pastor has been pulled out of the pulpit in the South after a really disturbing confession. Juan Demetrius McFarland said he knew he had AIDS, but he didn't reveal that information to sexual partners, and many of them were members of his congregation. This happened at the Shiloh Baptist Church in Montgomery, Alabama. McFarland also admitted to drug use and the mishandling of church funds. So right here, it gives a little bit more details, and it says that an Alabama church is subject to a scandal Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church, now former preacher, admitted from the pulpit to sleeping with several church members and not telling partners he has full-blown AIDS. Juan Demetrius McFarland didn't hold back when he revealed to worshipers at Shiloh Baptist Church on September 14th that he contracted HRV in 2003 and discovered in 2008 that he had AIDS. The church was very accepting of Reverend McFarland. They were willing to help him any way possible, said one church member. But once the pastor with 23 years of leadership started revealing more and more on the following Sundays, the members and leaders say they realized McFarland had crossed the line. In a resolution read out aloud at church, leaders shared that the pastor McFarland confirmed to WSFA TV that he admitted drug use, mishandling church funds, and what members say was the ultimate shocker described by church deacon Nathan Williams Jr. He concealed from the church that he had knowingly engaged in adultery in the church building with female members of Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church while knowingly having AIDS. This past Sunday, McFarland was removed as a church pastor. Still, church members say some congregation members are afraid to come forward and many are concerned. Okay. 
It says, who does this to people and you are the leader? Who does this? I know a young lady who is a member of the church who says that she has slept with him and that she didn't want this to go public. She's running out now trying to find out if there's anything wrong with her. My heart goes out to her because she has been a wonderful church member, a church member says. Deacon Williams says in his 70 years at the church, this is the biggest scandal the church has ever experienced. And it says, William says leaders have obtained legal counsel and now focused on moving the church forward. The church was very accepting of Reverend McFarland. They were willing to help him in any way possible. But once the pastor with 23 years of leadership started revealing more and more on the following Sundays, members and leaders say they realized McFarland had crossed the line. And it was concealed from the congregation of the church that he had knowingly engaged in adultery in the church building of female members of Shallow Missionary Baptist Church while knowing that he had an aid. This past Sunday, McFarland was removed. Okay. So this was out of this church and he the, the 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 previous story that I just read to you guys she had herpes. Now this is a story out of Alabama where the pastor was handing out eggs. Okay? Y'all need to stop thinking or 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 glamorizing cuz you know what? A lot of people, they glamorize these pastors just like they glamorize these celebrities. Girls be willing to have hanky-panky with any celebrity just so that they can try to get this ticket of a check baby. Same way the church folk be trying to glamorize these pastors and can't wait to throw the kitty cat at them. Stop glamorizing these men, period, regardless of what their role is, whether it be celebrity, whether it be pastor, because you get in the same package that everybody else getting with these ninjas because they handing out that schloink schloink to any and everybody who gonna take it. And it's just not worth it, okay? So definitely make sure that you are checking who you are sleeping with, whether it be doing a test together or making sure you see proper up-to-date paperwork. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this story and we'll talk on the next one, okay? But let me, let's leave out with a little sermon from the preacher that was dropping off the earth okay we're just gonna we're just gonna hear a little bit of his sermon and then we're gonna be out you got to be able to say that as a believer that the blood is essential to your faith the scripture says that Almost all things, that's almost everything, is purged with the blood. All of us in here are recipients of blood, and we are alive and well today because of the blood that flows through our veins. Amen. And we don't have to walk downtown with signs on our shoulders. We don't have to do marches to, to let God know we're being wrong. God knows when his people are being mistreated. Amen. We can hide from one another. You can hide from the church. And we can hide from me. But we cannot hide from God. The blood is an agent of the most high God. Amen. We praying for God to bless us more and he ain't going to bless you more until you do what he told you to do with the less that he's given you. Amen. Amen. You are praying and you want to answer Maybe he's telling you you got to learn how to treat folk right. Maybe, maybe he's telling you to do a good job in the area of ministry that you've already been assigned. Maybe he's telling you to be more faithful in what he called you to do because he woke you up this morning. 
child. Now, why does it sound like each of these pastors who have been behind these huge scandals, when you listen to their church sermons, why does it sound like they preach into themselves and telling themselves what they need to be doing? I mean, y'all sit up in these church house, give y'all tithes, your 10 percent whole time. Y'all thinking they preaching to you. They preaching to they self about what they need to be doing. Okay, let's listen to a little bit more because the fact that he was dropping off urns to multiple, <laughs> multiple members, you dang on right God was telling you you need to be doing right by people. <laughs> let's listen to a little bit more. <laughs> Amen. I've lived long, long enough to know that angry folk do some crazy stuff. Are y'all praying with me? You ain't mad at me for nothing. I know why you're mad. You're mad because you're so bad. Sometimes God have to show us who's bad, who be. Amen. Sometimes we don't know who has the power. We don't know who's in control. Sometimes God have to show us that he is in control and so he sent plague after plague and to no avail and so finally he sent death the death angel would come at an appointed time and kill every firstborn son but the message was to those who were believers to those who were righteous take the blood and sprinkle it over your doorpost when the death angel comes whatever house that he finds the blood on the post he will pass over and I know some of us think that we, we are all that in a bag of chips <laughs> amen but you don't know that the bag has a hole in it <laughs> amen 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 you don't understand that the bag has holes in it and you're not as full as you presume all of us got problems we we all are saints with sinner problem amen we saints we sin a problem yes some of us still lie some of us still cheat and some of us y'all ain't gonna say nothing some of us drink some of us smoke y'all ain't gonna say that some of us are whores and whoremongers Again, not him preaching to himself because he was the whore and the whore manga and he was the one doing all of the drugs and the things of the things because he admitted in church that he was off of all kind of okie doke enhancements and he was having the urns and he was sleeping with the married church members, the church members and passing along whatever came out of the blood to somebody else okay can i get a witness okay i mean hide your kids hide your wives because they letting anybody preach these days and whole time they be preaching to themselves talking about some of us is drinkers some of us is whores and whoremongers and whole time you are everything <laughs> that you said and you're supposed to be the person that was leading by example but we're gonna stop his sermon right there because baby i cannot take no more i can't take no more y'all see but anyways what ended up happening to him was they literally had to file like a lawsuit to remove him and once it went to the courts and the judge deemed him as um not adequate to be a pastor then he, at that time, it took all the way up to the court. Then at that time, the judge ruled against him to get him taken out of the church. Then at that time, he said, okay, I'm going to leave the church. When whole time, as soon as it was revealed that you had earned, you were sleeping with married church members and you was sleeping and passing along whatever, whatever, you should have willingly just bowed out in the first place. But again, that story was out of 2014. And the reason why I brought it up is because this happening a lot in these churches. Now, not too long ago, I even talked about a pastor who 
whole time he preaching and he had a whole boyfriend, but acting like he is against all of that, but getting his schloink schloink wet by a man. And it's just a lot, a whole lot, a whole lot of going on. Y'all need to watch and, 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 and be careful whose word you're receiving because it's a mess, okay? It is truly, truly, truly a mess. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this story. Let me know what y'all think down below. And um, if you slanging the, the, kudu, the kudu cat to these pastors or whoever, go get checked, go get tested and make sure everything is okay because, baby, it ain't safe nowhere. All right, we out.